So I have here a pile of bike products, and today we're gonna unbox all of them, take a look at them, see what they do, and I'll tell you what I think of them. And today we're gonna start with some stuff that's really tiny. This. This is a battery powered bike pump. So you can see there's a little button over here. Here's where you stick the valve stem in. It's got USB-C charging, that's great. Even my Sony camera comes with micro B, which is insane. But before we test this to see if it's any good, I, what's the point? Why do you need an electric bike pump this small? I mean, it obviously must run out of batteries really quick. And so it's not giving you the same benefit as like a micro pump. And if you look at a micro pump like this one, it's not even really saving you any space because this is thicker, right? So if you're putting either one in your pocket or something, yeah, the micro pump barely feels like it's there. This feels like a brick in your pocket. Let's see what it weighs compared to other methods of inflation. So we're set to grams here, the micro pump, 81 grams, CO2 with inflator, 84 grams, lithium ion pump, 102 grams. I don't know if you obsess over 20 grams, I don't. With the micro pump, you get unlimited inflates, just leave it and forget it. Um, but it's really, really hard to use. With a CO2, it's super, super easy to use and very light and compact, but you only get one shot. With this battery-powered pump, it's really easy to use. Oh, there it goes. Let's see how it inflates. That was pretty unscientific. I'm just using the squeeze test you could get back to the trailhead with this tire. So in two minutes, we got this up to 21 and a half PSI. That's completely usable tire pressure on a mountain bike. Could I do better with a hand pump? Absolutely not, and I don't care to find out. So this is definitely better than a hand pump, but uh, how much can you get out of it before it runs out of battery? Let's inflate it up again. Let's see if we can get two inflates out of this on one charge. Ooh, sounds like it's struggling. So we're at like 17 PSI. We barely got two inflates out of it. Now for a road bike, this would be fantastic because you would pump up the tire in no time and you could probably do it over and over and over again. Road bike tires are really low volume, but on a mountain bike tire, you're barely getting an advantage over a CO2. In fact, a CO2 is a lot quicker, it's smaller, it's lighter. There's probably a place for this for really isolated use cases, but none that would apply to me. I don't know, you guys saw what it did, what do you think? This is $80? Yeah, I'm not gonna use it. This valve is completely clogged. And I was just thinking how that rarely happens to me when I was deciding whether or not to review these Fillmore tubeless valves. Uh, they're supposed to not clog as easily. So the way it works is tire sealant is designed to clog small holes. Your valve that you pump up your tire with, it's a little tiny hole. And so if there's any air leaking out of it and sealant gets inside, it dries up and it does what it's supposed to do. These have kind of a unique design that's supposed to avoid that. It is a very premium, very nice valve. How does this work? Oh, that's smart. The entire valve core is this one piece that runs from the top of the stem all the way to the bottom. So any clog that forms over here from outside the bike, you just push the tip of the stem down and it's supposed to bust the clog. I think I'm gonna replace the valves on this wheel with these and see long-term whether it does. It looks like a good design. It is a very premium valve core. 40 bucks is steep, but yeah, we're spending $90 on chains and stuff. Uh, way she goes. This is a strap that you take with you so that if your bike breaks, you can tie your bike to your back and hike it out. I'm gonna try and remain impartial here and we're just gonna see how this thing works. All right, let's just do this like we're on the trail. I got a flat tire, so obviously I have to carry my bike all the way home, so. I 
think I know how this works now. You're supposed to carry it like this. So if your level of preparedness is such that you carry the strap with you, I assume you probably have a backpack on and so it wouldn't be as uncomfortable as this is. I have suspension linkage digging into my shoulder blade, a pedal kind of catching me every so often. It's very uncomfortable. Is it worse than carrying the bike over your shoulder? It's probably better than carrying a bike over your shoulder, but in what situation would you do that? I feel bad about myself for, it's like, there's a whole story behind it. One day I saw on social media, a friend broke his bike while riding it and ended up carrying it about six miles down the mountain to safety. I figured there had to be a better way, if only, <laughs> the thought is coming from the right place, right? Like. Yeah, this is better than carrying your bike for six miles, but there are other things that are better than carrying your bike for six miles that could fit in something smaller. So there it is. Think of all the things you could carry in here. Same footprint, right? Hold that thought. This guy on social media who carried his bike six miles. Yes, it's totally possible his frame was completely cracked in half, but in reality, he was probably unprepared. And if you are so unprepared that you have to carry your bike six miles back to the trailhead, you ain't bringing this with you. And so you're right back to the same problem and you're carrying your bike. And so to me, this level of preparedness could be way more effective if in this bag was like a couple of CO2s, a plug kit, an inner tube, a multi-tool. I understand there are situations where you have to carry your bike, okay? I've done bike rides where there's hike-a-bike sections, and I understand that you can blow up a wheel to the point where it doesn't even roll. I get that, but there's a solution to all of these things. So let's say it's your front wheel. Well, easy solution, you do this, and you roll it back to the trailhead. And if you need to carry the bike temporarily for a few seconds, you can just pick it up. I hate shouting down like small companies and entrepreneurs, like I, I really do. But this smells like something from outside the bike industry where like they think that mountain bikers are gonna use this. Am I completely wrong about this? Is this extremely useful? If you are a person who is looking for something like this, it works. Everything on it works and it looks like it would last a long time. I just would never ever use it. If this next product is what I think it is, it's an emergency bleed kit. This is the whole thing. Look at how big it is. I assume you fill it up with your own oil because different brakes take different oil. If you are really, really prepared, right? You're carrying around a backpack, you're going for a long backcountry ride. Really cool to be able to service hydraulic disc brakes if anything goes wrong, if your brakes go mushy on you for some reason. So first of all, brake bleeding on a vehicle or on a mountain bike. It's basically when you have hydraulic brakes, sometimes air bubbles get trapped inside or sometimes you're low on fluid. The act of bleeding them is making sure there's no air in the system and you have all just fluid in there. You could screw it into your brake lever or your caliper with some fluid in here and you can try and get some bubbles out and get it good enough to get back to the trailhead. I could see this being kind of useful. Not much of a mess. Yeah, what can I say? That's pretty brilliant. What does it cost? 30 US dollars and it's sold out. I mean, that's a pretty fair price for something so specific. To call it a bleed kit, I don't know. I would call it a self-enclosed bleed funnel. It's well thought out, it's useful. There's obviously a lot of people who need it because it's sold out. I'd say good job. Next up. World's lightest bicycle grips, 18 grams. I don't even know what bicycle grips normally weigh. Let's, let's find out. Okay, so first of all, are these 18 grams? Yeah, they're 18 grams, but with the little caps, they're 24 grams. And most bicycle grips either have the caps built in or they come with caps. That's part of grips. And so these are 24 grams. 
that's still probably really light. These feel like nothing. Here are a set of ergon grips with the ends built in. I love these grips. 102 grams. Okay, so you're saving like 75% off the weight of the grips. That's pretty damn good. In my opinion, these are only viable if they're as good as any other grip. They're very comfortable. It would take a long-term test to see how these hold up, but it does seem to be made of pretty durable foam. I prefer just normal rubber grips, and I'm not that obsessive with weight, where I would try to save weight in my grips. I just want the grips that I like the best, but I don't deny that this is important to someone, and grips are a place where apparently you can easily save 75 grams. What do these cost? $41. That puts them in like a premium, premium price category for grips. I don't know if these would be worth it to me, but they have good reviews and all mountain style usually makes really good stuff. And so I would say if you're trying to save weight on your grips, these might be a good product to look at. Not for me, but they work and I'm about to test them a little bit further. Okay, next product. Riley ramps. I assume this is gonna be some kind of a ramp and it's in a very nice, neat package. So you can travel with it, you can bring it places and the same straps that you use to kind of package it, they get used to hold the ramp together so it doesn't fall apart once it's set up. And that's it. Real nice. I mean, this is definitely like a kid ramp, a scooter ramp, balance bike ramp. There's not that much trouble we can get into with it, but let's have a little session on it. <laughs> okay, not a whole lot I can do on it, but I've determined that it's pretty solid, it's well made. No transitions or anything, but you wouldn't expect that on a ramp this small. This is the Renegade, and it's priced at $218.99, and they do advertise balance bikes, one wheels, stuff like that. My daughter messing around in the driveway on a balance bike, this is exactly the type of ramp that I would need. It's a good little ramp, and the fact that it's portable is really nice. Part of me thinks that $220 is a little steep, but at the same time, what are you supposed to sell something like this for? It's not like it's sold at Walmart and they're gonna sell millions of them. This is kind of a niche item. If you're looking for exactly this, I mean, yeah, it's pretty tough to beat. I gotta say, it packs back up really easily. Like, it's the type of thing where you're like, oh, that's the last time it'll be packed up like this. No, it actually packs up really easily. And it's got a little handle here, not bad. As for these grips, they're comfortable, they're grippy. They did move a little bit. I still don't think I've used them enough or for the proper discipline to really give it a judgment. I'd say these are probably gonna be for people who are riding cross country. Yeah, it's tough to say. They are comfortable and they are grippy. So these are bamboo handlebars and they're gonna be designed for commuter bikes, for maybe a bike that you're riding on gravel. It's not for like hitting big jumps and drops, but these are just breathtakingly beautiful. They have a really nice sweep too. So as you can see in the center here where the clamp goes, there's actually a carbon fiber sleeve around them. These are a hundred bucks, which, ah. Not bad. I was about to put them on the Kent Travail. That would be kind of a travesty. I'm gonna put them on the toll bike. Oh man. So I can already see one big problem. I'm gonna have to start upgrading other things on the bike so they look as nice as the handlebars. I'm loving this sweep. Loving the shape of these bars. Ooh, I can really feel the flex. Like, the, like no joke. No joke, these would absorb some, it's almost scary. I'm gonna take it on some gravel. These are freaking awesome. 
they flex so much, like way more than you would want on a bike that you're using for any type of performance. But for like one of those mountain towns in Colorado that are more or less flat in the town area and you're just cruising around your single speed, mountains in the background, and you look down and you just see these beautiful bamboo bars. I'm a huge fan of these. I'm gonna come up with some kind of build just to use these on the build, like awesome. It's the Stwap, the Delta Stwap Repair Storage Strap, the ST Wap. So, I normally make it a point not to review gear straps. You know why? Because the first time I saw a gear strap, I knew everything I needed to know. It's a strap that straps gear to your bike. But this looks intriguing. This looks a little bit different. The picture in particular is just like, wow. That would be cool if it works like that. So this gear strap gives you a bunch of spaces to attach your multi-tool and to attach your CO2 and to kind of put everything together into one neat package. Normally you're just kind of bundling it together and putting a strap around it. And so this is all attached here. Now we can strap this around the tube onto the bike. It's not really pretty the way that I just did it. I don't know, let me try in a different spot. I'm just gonna strap it down up here and see what it looks like. It's not particularly elegant looking like the picture, and maybe that's my fault. This is the recommended usage right here. I have it on the tightest setting it goes, and it just doesn't feel as tight as other gear straps that I've tested. It's definitely not as tight as the Dakine Hot Laps Gripper. Uh, what does this cost? Okay, so it's not expensive. It's 20 bucks, which seems fair for something like this. I just wouldn't do any hardcore mountain biking with this. It just doesn't seem secure enough. I think for some people this might be good because it does give you a lot of spaces to kind of build your own kit, but I just prefer the Dakine Hot Laps Gripper. That's the best gear strap I've ever seen, and it's the only one I use, and until I find one that's better than that, yeah, I've just the other gear straps I can just have an opinion on, but it's not the one I'm actually using on my bike. So, pretty interesting band of products today. I think the one that kind of stands out to me is this little bleed kit. I've never seen anything like that. It's so stupidly simple. It's like if you took a bleed funnel, shrunk it down and stuck a little cap on it. The bamboo handlebars will definitely be making a reappearance. I'm excited to try these valve stems long term. Kind of pricey, but at the same time, if they stop clogs, that's a cool thing. But overall, we had a pretty interesting pile of products today. I hope you guys saw something you liked today. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found this entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.